Good morning, Mount Gilead family. I hope you all are doing well this morning. I'm excited to get to uh, share with you guys from my home this Saturday morning. And uh, if you're joining us this morning or you're watching this later today, uh, welcome. I hope uh, my message for you all today is one of encouragement and is one of, uh, of joy and uplifting to you today. Now, um, this morning I'm wearing one of my absolute favorite t-shirts and a lot of people see this t-shirt and they ask me, oh, like, what does that mean? Why are you wearing this shirt? What do you, like, what's the point of this thing? Uh, and to make a long story short, this shirt is uh, from a podcast that I listen to. But the reason that I love this shirt so much is because of what these words sort of represent. My shirt very simply says, Jocks Machina, okay? And I know this is a very odd phrase to put together, Jocks Machina, but what this shirt represents is a mixture between two different cultures in today's world and in modern society that people don't think go together. They are what people would consider diametrically opposed. One is the sort of jock culture, this culture of liking sports and being active and doing all these different things. And the machina side is, um, is a part of what we would consider nerd culture. Superheroes, comic books, uh, board games, all of these different things that are deeply rooted in nerd culture. And this shirt represents that these two things can come together and people can enjoy these two things. And that's why I love this shirt so much because it represents a big part of myself of sort of what I love because I love football. I love basketball. I love all the different sports um, that are out there. I love uh, participating in sports and all these different things, but I also absolutely have loved uh, being a part of this culture of comic books and superheroes and board games and video games and all this stuff for my entire life. And so I love this shirt because it shows these two different cultures can exist in one thing um, out of respect and love for each other. And that is kind of what I want to talk about today um, is uh, this passage here in Romans 13. Um, Jeff last week spoke about uh, what it is to do justice. And this is a passage in scripture that kind of came to mind when I thought about what it is to do justice. Romans 13 verses 8 through 10, a really short passage here from Paul. It says this, let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other command there may be are summed up in this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfillment of the law. And as I read this passage, I just love what it says, because it is basically saying at the essence of what God gave as the law, at the root and the foundation is to love your neighbor as yourself. And I think that goes to show the importance that God put on loving our neighbor as ourselves. And today I think it's important also to remember who our neighbors are. And when I think about who our neighbors are, I think about the story of the Samaritan man and how he went out of his way. In that pair or in that story, um, you will see these men who were religious leaders, who were upstanding citizens. They would have been the ones you would think would go and save the injured man, but no, it was the Samaritan, the one who would be hated, the one who would not be loved in return, who chose to save him. And I think that's important to remember as we think about who our neighbors are and as we try to live out this command of loving our neighbor. Our neighbors, I mean, they're the people we love and they're the people we like and the people we interact with on a daily basis, but they're also the ones we know nothing about. They're the ones that maybe we don't understand, maybe we disagree with. Those are our neighbors, and we are called to love them. I'm going to read just that last verse, verse 10, one more time. Love does no harm to a neighbor.
therefore love is the fulfillment of the law. I think that is so profound and in such beautiful words coming from Paul. And I hope those words encourage you this morning to go out and to love your neighbor because ultimately that is something that God has commanded us to do. And honestly, if we're loving our neighbor, we are doing justice. If we are loving our neighbor as ourselves, caring for them on equal terms, we are doing justice in the world today. And our world needs a lot of justice. It needs a lot of love. And we are called to love our neighbor as ourselves. I'm going to pray for us this morning, and then I, um, I'm i going to go ahead and get off here. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father God, thank you so much for being a God who loves us and who cares for us and who is always with us. God, I pray today that we can um, do justice. I pray that we can go out and uh, live this out in our lives, Lord, but I also pray that we can be loving all of those that we come in contact with, God, even when it's so difficult, even when we disagree in so many ways or we feel wronged or we feel hurt or angry or upset, God, I just pray that we can look to you in all of those things, that you can give us peace and you can help us to love our neighbor as ourselves. That is my prayer today, God. Lord, be with all of those um, who are hurting, all of those who need you, all of those who need your love, God, be with them. Lord, give strength to those who are weak. Give wisdom to those who are seeking guidance, God. Be with us today. We love you and we praise you and we are thankful for your son, Jesus. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. All right. Go in peace and have a wonderful day. God bless you all.